chica. All right, we're going to take a look at expected value or fairness. I'm going to focus on a method that I call the simulation method, but there are other methods for this. Um, so when we're looking at expected value, it represents the average amount that you would expect to win or lose per play in a gambling situation. So uh, there's lots of different games out there that you can play at casinos um, or at charity events. And so the idea is, well, how much would you expect to win or lose uh, every time uh, that you play? So there's a few different uh, situations that we could have. A game is fair if the expected value is zero. And what that means is that over time, I would expect that I break even by playing the game. I wouldn't be up and I wouldn't be down. Now, as you'd expect at a casino, very few games are in fact fair. Um, but if you're doing a game uh, with a friend, like maybe tossing a coin or playing rock, paper, scissors, uh, those games would in fact be fair. Uh, a game could also be favorable if the expected value is greater than zero. And that means that over time, you would expect to, uh, to earn money or to be up by playing the game. And again, in casino, we don't see those situations. But uh, there can be situations that, that could apply in other, in other parts of life. And the other possibility is that a game is unfavorable. And that means that the expected value is less than zero or you would lose money uh, over time. So most casino games would fit into the uh, unfavorable category, although there are a couple of fair bets um, at a casino. All right, so we're going to look at how you can figure out if a situation involving kind of putting down money and winning, so a gambling situation, uh, is fair or not. And we're also going to look at what your expected value is, so how much you would expect to win or lose uh, in that particular situation. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the steps. All right, so let's take a look at the steps for solving an expected value question. Again, I'm focusing here on the simulation method, which is kind of my, my own way of presenting it, because in my experience, people find it a lot easier. Now, there are quite a few steps, so I, but I don't want you to be uh, too worried about that, because uh, most of them are really quite simple. When we look at the examples, it'll make even more sense to you. So here are the steps. Step by step. Alright, first we need to identify it as an expected value question. Uh, this piece is usually going to be very simple. It'll either say, what's the expected value, or it may ask you if the game is fair, or something that Im implies that. Uh, after that, you have to calculate the probabilities of your desired outcomes. Um, usually you're just going to focus on the winning combinations, but depending on how it's worded, uh, sometimes you may have to work backwards a little bit. You may also have to find out um, the chance of you losing as well. After that, we're going to determine a good number of times to simulate playing the game. And this is probably the trickiest part. Um, again, the idea of the simulation method is without actually going through and playing the game a certain number of times, we're going to figure out, well, what will we expect to happen if we played it a certain amount of times? And what I want you to do here is just look at the denominator uh, of your probabilities. Um, that's going to tell you the total number of possible outcomes. And, and we're going to simulate playing it that many times. And that way, you could easily determine how many times you'd expect each of your outcomes to occur. Now, if your uh, denominators for your outcomes are uh, different, then find a common denominator between all of them and simulate playing it that many times. And um, that will make it uh, a little bit more straightforward. After that, I'm going to figure out what's the overall cost for playing the game to select a number of times. If it costs $5 to play, and you're going to simulate playing the game 20 times, well, then your overall cost would be $100, five times, uh, five times 20. And then after that, we're going to look at, well, how much money do we get back? So we're going to multiply the amount of return, that's the amount that you would uh, win, for each of our winning combinations uh, by the number of times you would expect that outcome. So if I'm playing the game 20 times and there's a certain uh, occurrence that happens, say, 3 out of 20 times, well, I'd expect it in playing it 20 times, I would get it 3 times. If that pays me back, say, $10, then I'd have 10 times 3, or uh, $30. Again, we'll look at the examples for that. Uh, we're going to then add up all the returns that we would get from step 5 for all the combinations that pay us back. And uh, usually you're going to have more than one winning combination, in, uh, at least in some of the more advanced uh, expected value questions. So we're going to add up all the returns that we would expect to get back, and then we're going to subtract it from our overall cost. And this will give us our net or overall gain or loss. 
And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to div uh, divide this overall gain or loss um, from step six by the number of times that we simulated playing. And that's going to give us, well, an average amount that we're up or down uh, for each time that we would play, which is really what the expected value is, just the on average how much would I expect to win or lose. Uh, and for the most part, we're really trying to figure out, is the game fair? And that means we have an expected value of zero, meaning I wouldn't expect to be up, uh, nor would I expect to be down. So we're going to take a look at a couple examples from this now, and we'll hopefully uh, this make this all make a little bit more sense. All right, so uh, we've taken a look at the steps, and now we're going to look at applying them in an example. As I said, the idea of the simulation method is that we kind of pretend or simulate playing the game a certain number of times, and then see what the outcomes are. And it's not the only method, but it is the one that I find uh, makes the most sense to most people. So let's look at this game here. Uh, we've got two jars below and they contain balls that are all the same size so the chances of each ball being pulled out would be uh, would be the same because they're the same size and the way the game works is we bet five dollars and without looking in the jar again it's showing the colored balls here but the jars would be uh, would be solid colors so you wouldn't, couldn't see inside uh, we would take one ball from each jar and if we the two balls that we draw are the same color then we'll win and if we win, we get $20 back and the original uh, bet back in $5. So in some games that you play, uh, you don't get the original bet back. Like if you play a slot machine, the money goes in and then it's stuck in the machine and, and you might win back, but it's not really factoring in your original bet. Uh, other games like Blackjack, they don't actually take your money until the end of the game. So if you win, you get back your original bet plus the amount that you've won. So you have to always read that because different situations are different. And so we're asked, is this game fair? All right, well, if we go through our steps, again, we're asked it's fair, so it's obviously um, we're looking at expected value of fairness. And the first thing we need to do is figure out, well, what are the odds of our winning combinations? And we've got two winning combinations uh, in this case. The first one that we have is that we get two greens. So let's look at the probability of getting a green on the first ball and a green on the second one. And again, there's different ways of doing this as well. This is the method I prefer. So if we look at the first jar, the probability of getting a green in the first jar is three out of five. There's three green uh, marbles, uh, th or green balls, and there's five in total. So our probability of getting a green on just the first jar is three out of five. Now to get a green out of the second jar, we've got two greens. So two possible uh, favorable outcomes. And then there's 10 different balls to choose from, so it's two out of 10. Now, in order to get the combination of green-green, we need to get three out of five in the first ball and two out of 10 on the second. So if you go back to your basic event probability, that means we multiply them. And remember when we multiply, we multiply our numerators, three times two is six, and our denominators separately, five times 10 is 50. So there's a 6 out of 50 chance that we would pick uh, two green balls, one for the first and one from the second jar. And that's one of our winning combinations. However, we're told that uh, two balls are the same color, and that could also mean we could pick red and red. So we're going to do the same thing, only this time with red. Well, in our first jar, the probability of red is 2 out of 5. And then in the second jar, we'll multiply it. Our probability is 2 out of 10, and we multiply this time, we get 4 out of 50. So it's not quite as likely that we would pick red. Now, when we look overall, any of these six uh, possibilities would work for green-green, and any of these four possibilities would work for red-red. So we have to add them together to give our overall chances of winning. Now, remember, when we add an, uh, fractions, we need to have a common denominator. We do here, 50, which represents all of the possible combinations of balls, 5 times 10. Uh, and 6 plus 4 gives us 10. So our overall probability here is uh, 10 out of 50. So now the simulation method, the idea is that we simulate playing a certain number of times. Now, if you look at the denominator here, that's usually a good number of times to simulate playing your game. So we're going to simulate playing 50 times. That's right, we're going to play 50 times. And the reason we picked 50 again is because that means we would kind of expect that we would get each of those 50 outcomes once, uh, at least on average. 
So if we play 50 times, how much is it going to cost us? And we'll, we'll focus on the total cost here. So it costs us $5 a play. So we'll have 50 times $5. And that's, I'm going to do that without a calculator. That's $250. So to play this game 50 times, it's going to cost us $250. Now, if the game is fair, which is what we're trying to find out, we would get our $250 back. We wouldn't expect any more than that, but we wouldn't expect any less as well. So let's take a look. What do we expect is going to happen if we play 50 times? Well, we would expect that we would win 10 out of 50 times. I'll write that here in blue. So we'd expect if we play 50 times that we're going to win 10 times. Now again, in reality, we may not win exactly 10 times. We might only, we might only win 8 or 9. We might win a little bit more. But I would expect uh, overall that I would win about 10 times. Uh, that I'd win 10 times. Well, how much money do I get back? Well, I get $20. So I'll have my $20 back uh, times 10 for each of the times I win. So that's going to give me 200 dollars of my 250 back. However, I also get back my original bet. Well, that's five dollars. So I'm going to get back another five dollars. I'm going to get that back ten times. And that's going to give me back another fifty dollars. So in total, I get back two hundred and fifty dollars. We put in two hundred and fifty dollars. So this scheme uh, is fair. And that's, that's all it means to be fair. Total amount of money that comes in is the total amount of money that comes out. Let's take a look at another example. All right, so here's a second example. Um, so we're at an amusement park, and they offer a game that involves spinning a wheel, and we got a little pointer on the wheel here. And uh, the wheel is divided into 12 congruent sectors, so each of the sectors uh, is the same size, and therefore would have the same chance of, uh, of coming up or being where the pointer stops. And if the pointer stops in one of the white sectors, then uh, we're going to win the amount of money that's shown, uh, and we keep the money that we bet. And if the pointer stops in one of the shaded areas, then, uh, then we lose the money we bet. We're told it costs $5 to play, and we're asked, well, what is the expected value for the game? So remember, if the expected value is uh, positive, that means it's going to be favorable. If the expected value is negative, it means we would expect to lose money or it would be unfavorable. And if the expected value is zero, then the game would be fair, like in our last situation. So let's go through our steps here. Obviously, we're looking for the expected value. So we have to then figure out, well, what are the probability of our various outcomes? And we're going to focus on the winning outcomes. Well, uh, possibility number one is we get $4. So we could win $4. And uh, how often is that going to happen? Well, there are three sectors that are $4. And there's 12 sectors in total. So we win $4 three out of 12 times. All right, we can also win $6. And we would expect to win $6 two out of 12 times. There's only two of the $6 sectors, in 12 in total. And we would expect to win $12, which is our last winning outcome. We would expect to win $12 one out of 12 times. So again, using the simulation method, the idea is that we're going to try and simulate playing the game. Uh, so we have to pick a good number to play. Now, I recommend just go with the, the bottom here. Now, sometimes you might have a situation where you don't have a common denominator, and then just simply uh, find one and use that value. So we're going to simulate playing this game. We're going to simulate playing it 12 times. Now, uh, how much is it going to cost? Well. We're told it costs five dollars to play every time, so twelve plays times five dollars is going to give us sixty dollars. So it costs us sixty dollars to play, and looking at what we'd expect, how many times we'd expect to win if we played uh, twelve times, if the game is fair, we would get our sixty dollars back. So let's see what's going to happen. If we play twelve times, we would expect to get four dollars uh, three times. And four times three. So that's going to give us twelve dollars back. We would expect to win six dollars 
two times, because it happens two out of 12 times. And that would also give us a total of $12 back. Okay, well, right in, right in the back here. We get $12 back. And then same here. And then we would expect to get $12 once. And 12 times 1 is obviously uh, $12. Now, wait a minute, though. It also says, and we keep the money that we bet. So we'll get $5, which is the money that we bet. How many times will we get that back? Well, we'll get that three, four, five, six times. So that gives us another $30 back. So, well, now we can add it all up. How much would we get back in total? 10, 20, 30, 36, 66 dollars. So if we played 12 times, we would actually get back 66 dollars, even though it would only cost us uh, 60 dollars. So what do we notice? If we play 12 times, we would actually be up. would be up six dollars. Now for the expected value it's saying well how much would we be expect to be up or down on average each time we play the game? Well if I played it just once I would expect, well oh, pardon me, if I played it 12 times I expect to be up six dollars so on average I'd expect to be up uh, 50 cents uh, per play and this represents your expected value right there. So this game is actually uh, favorable. And there you go. So I hope that helps for expected value. Check out our other videos. Bye-bye. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.